All right, today we're going to be making a split board and you're going to need the following materials. The split kit by Volet, some spar urethane and a brush, sandpaper and a block, safety goggles, tape measure, a rubber mallet, a straight edge with measurements, a file, a drill, a circular saw with a carbide tip blade, some wood clamps, a center punch, hacksaw, a permanent marker, a couple saw horses, West Systems G Flex 650 epoxy, some tape, I prefer blue tape. You're also going to need some bits for your drill a Phillips head, a 1 8th, a 3 16th, and a 19 64th drill bit, a 3, a three quarter inch wood boring bit, and a 3 8 countersink bit. You're also going to need some manufactured wood. You're going to need at least one piece that's as long as your board and a bunch of smaller pieces. And of course you're going to need a perfectly good snowboard to chop in half. Today I'm going to be cutting in half my Solomon stick stick. It's a sweet board. It's going to be great for the backcountry. The first thing you want to do is take your bindings and put them on your board where you normally like your stance. And then outline them with blue tape. Um, that way when you put the pucks on you have a, a better idea of where they're going. You only have one shot at this because you'll be drilling some holes in your board. Next thing you want to do is uh, put another piece of blue tape straight down the center of the board on the top and on the bottom. It's going to help prevent chipping and also you're going to use a, a ruler just like this and then measure from both sides to the center all the way down the board. Do it every few inches because you're going to want a really straight line to cut down the center. of. Now that you have all your measurements you want to take a piece of your manufactured wood. The reason I use manufactured wood is because you know it's going to be straight. If you buy natural wood it might not be straight. So you got to watch out for that. Also, it's super easy to flex with your board. So when you draw your line, it's all lined up. And then you can use uh, the box from Volet on the edge. Line that up with your dots and draw the same line. Alright, this next part is the most exciting, dangerous, and scariest part of this whole project. We're going to cut the board in half. So what I've done is I've take, taken these Irwin Quick Grips and I've taken my manufactured wood and uh, I'm using it as a guide for my saw so I can run the saw just right up along this and not have to worry about keeping a straight line. This is going to do it for me. You want to start at one end, don't go through the metal tip at the end, and then come all the way to the other end. And again, don't go through the metal edge because it can rip it out. We're going to take care of that with a hacksaw in the end. So I have uh, the, this manufactured wood attached to my snowboard and then also the board attached to the sawhorse so nothing will move. I mean you can move this around and nothing's going to come out of place. You want to do it in one fluid motion. If you cut a little bit, take it out, put it back in, cut some more, you're going to have uneven cuts. So uh, here we go. Well that was fun. I'm glad that's over with. What I'm going to do now is take my hacksaw. You want a new blade if you have one. And uh, you're going to cut through the metal tips where you didn't cut with your saw. Alright, now that my board's cut in half, I'm going to come through and take off all my tape. This blue tape should stick, but it's kind of weird texture on there because it was underneath this other tape. And then what you want to do now is uh, take some rough sandpaper and then you can get all the uh, excess fuzzies as I call them off and then when you're done with this use some kind of block of some sort with some more sandpaper and then on the top of your board you're gonna uh, you're gonna scrape or your sand at a 45 degree angle like this because it's not as important that the top of your board touches the other top of the board. You want 
uh, the bottom of the boards to touch so you have a nice smooth bottom surface. So you can do that. You can use a, a file um, to get some of the metal off at the ends if uh, the hacksaw didn't take care of all of it. But other than that, it's pretty simple. All right, the sanding is done. As you can see, it's a very nice fit all the way down. All right, now I'm gonna seal the inside edges of my board. I put tape on the top so I don't have to worry about cleaning off the top of my board. I didn't worry about doing it to the bottom. Um, the board came pre-waxed, which was nice. So I can just scrape it in the end and I'm not gonna worry about it. But uh, what I use is, a, it's from Barthane called Sparurethane. I've used it in the past. Works fantastic. I've had no problems with it. So I'm gonna put this on the board, just like this. Just a nice easy coat, not, nothing too thick. And what I'm gonna do is four coats over two hours, so basically every half an hour. And uh, that should be sufficient. Once your inside edges are dry, you want to sand them lightly to give them a smooth surface. Once you're done with that, you want to find uh, the contact points on your board. You're going to put it on a flat surface and then find where your board uh, touches the surface, measure in one inch, and then that's where we're going to place our pivoting hooks. You want to take your center punch, find your four targets. Once you're done with that, you can take off your sticker. I like to put my pivoting hooks on here. Make sure it looks like my holes are in the right place. Looks really good. So I'm going to move my board so I don't drill into my sawhorse. Use a 3 16th bit and drill straight down. Once your holes are drilled, flip over your board and you're going to take your 3 8 countersink bit and start drilling these out. You want to do it in small increments and have one of these bolts on hand so you can test it out and see when it's just flush with the surface. Once everything's flush on the bottom, you want to stick your bolts through, put your pivoting hooks on. You want to take the two washers and put them on the outside. But you want to get them down flush with your pivoting hooks. Now take your nuts and thread them onto your bolts. Well, I gave you an Allen key, so basically you want to use the Allen key on the bottom and then your 3 8 socket on the top and tighten all these. Now that all the bolts are tight, you want to do the same thing on the other side of the board. The next step is to mount the touring bracket and the climbing wire. So what you're going to want to do is find the balance point of the board. And the way you do this is you take these templates from Volet, you put the hardware on top, and you're going to shift them up and down your board until you can pick up your board with two fingers in the same place. And it balances very evenly. And then you're going to want to move uh, this pivot point mark about one centimeter towards the front of your board. Once you have those in place, you want to tape your templates. And then you can move all your hardware and then take your center punch and punch all the holes. Once you have everything center punched, you can take off your templates, find your holes, and you're going to make pilot holes with a 1 8 drill bit. Once you have all five done on each side, then you're going to use a 19th 64 bit to finish them off. Now you're going to use your 3 quarter inch wood boring bit on the base of the board just so when you put the T-nuts in they're just below the surface. You want to do this to all 10 of these holes.